Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict and welcome back to PixInsight. In this video I want to go over the noise reduction tools that PixInsight offers. There are quite a few of them and to understand what each of them does and how they are used is kind of important if you want to go about noise reduction in the process. I have a recent image of mine loaded. This is just the integration of NGC7822. This image has been stacked, 10 hours of exposure time, the edges have been cropped, the background has been neutralized and it's been color calibrated. The next step in my processing routine would be noise reduction. I will go about this in a few ways which PixInsight offers, explain them, to get you a basic understanding of what each one does and how it's used. And then you can go in and fine tune to your liking. I have histogram transformation and screen transfer function to stretch my image, because some of these processes are best used on stretched images, some of them on linear. I have the range selection to use masks and Starnet too, in my opinion now a must. Starnet has gotten so much better and it's so much easier to edit your images without stars in there. The first two processes which are kind of the same, multiscale median transform and multiscale linear transform. To explain what these two do, we first have to talk about wavelet layers, because those work with these called wavelet layers. A wavelet is basically an area in your image which has the same structures of the same size. To demonstrate what this means, I will stretch this image just now. and go into script, I think it was under analysis, and extract wavelet layers. Let's say to extract 6 and hit go. This process is only meant to visualize what wavelets are. You see, this one is called residual, R. Here we can see the biggest structures in our image. The nebula, the stars, but you can see, no noise, because noise is a very small structure and we can attack that independently from others. The next layer going down, the structures are going to get smaller. You can see still no noise in here, but most of the small stars and detail in the nebula. Going down layer 4, some color noise starts to appear. Even further down, now we have the small color noise in layer 3, very small color noise in 2, and now we get to maybe even bias noise. You can see that in this layer. Each pixel now has this tiny invariation, which is noise. And now let's attack these layers individually to work on the noise and not on the detail in our nebula. Multiscale linear transform, as the name suggests, works on linear images. So I will undo this and only preview this stretch. The image is still linear. We will set the algorithm to MLT. I will maybe choose 5 layers, and these are the wavelet layers we just discussed. Never touch the residual, and we will work our way. Select the first. We have detail layer, you could sharpen your image with this. I don't want to do that right now. I will check noise reduction in all of these layers. Not in the residual layer, again. We have the parameters threshold, amount and iterations. Amount and iterations is self-explanatory. And the bigger the threshold is, the more structures will be removed. So you now work your way down and choose less and less each time. So maybe a big threshold on here, smaller on here, going down to 3, going down to 2 and to 1 maybe, and also the same with the amount. So we will attack, the bigger the structures get, the less noise will be attacked. And this is the time where you should get your own feeling for this and try it out for yourself, because I would need different settings for this image than you would for yours. You can use a linear mask in this one, so check that and preview the mask, get the real-time preview on. 
So you can walk around with a mask, but in my opinion, masking in this process is not important and difficult to do actually, because masking on linear images is awful. So let's uncheck that. I don't need a mask, because the wavelets kind of work like a mask. They only attack some parts of the image, not everything. The other settings in this process are fine. And let's apply and see what happens. You can see some of those layers still need more noise reduction. So we have seen that layers 2 and 3 are heavily color noised. So let's bump it up. And just play with these values to find out what works best for you. That's multiscale linear transform. A bit better. The next process, which is kind of the same, multiscale median transform, which works on stretched images. So again, I will stretch this real fast. If you want a more detailed explanation on all of these steps in processing, I have a whole playlist of explaining Pixinsight tutorials from A to Z, the whole editing process on my channel right here. I will link it over there right now. The image is stretched. And now, the great thing about these process icons in Pixinsight, you can create your own and then share them on the web. So the one I'm pulling out now is in courtesy of Sean Nielsen from Visible Dark. I will link it down in the description. I just loaded this small right here. That's the one Sean shared on his website, on the YouTube channel as well. Double click it and you see the settings are loaded. You can see he chose to use a lot of more layers and go really in detail about these threshold and amounts. And before I do this now, let's think about the stars in our image. The stars are big structures and you can see we are working on big structures in this bottom layer right here. We are working on them with a small amount, but still we will affect stars. And I don't want to affect stars, they are not noisy. That's why I will use StarNet 2. Create the mask. I will leave a link in the description how to get StarNet 2 as a plugin in Pixinsight. You will have to download a few things and shove it into folders. I will apply and check back with you in a couple of minutes, because this can take a while. Look at this. StarNet 2 is so amazing. We now have our stars and our nebula only image, the starless image, and it looks amazing. StarNet uses a lot of time, it takes a lot of time because it's a neural network, so lots of processing in there. And now let's apply the multiscale median transform tool from Sean. Let's see how this works. Again, I don't use a mask. I don't need a mask because wavelets are masking already. Zoom in. And you can see that this improved a lot. I will go back. Zoom in more. Maybe on some detail of the nebula here. Look at this. This is some proper noise reduction right here. This is how powerful MMT can be. You can work on this, adjust the parameters to your liking. But one thing you see, there are some black spots left. And these are actually remnants of darker areas, which are hardly attacked by noise reduction. So to deal with those, the tip from Sean, I will just tell it here real quick right now again. If you want the full process, go to his video. I will use ACDNR, the basic noise reduction process, which is now kind of deprecated in Pixinside, but it's still usable. So just apply once. Also, you can use a mask, which in this case is more important because ACDNR does not work with the wavelet layers. You can see that the detail got kind of mushed. That's why I use masks. But dark spots are mostly gone. And in combination, MMT and ACDNR are wonderful. Now you kinda already got the feeling for ACDNR. 
You don't need to change a lot of settings there. You can choose lightnance and chromians. Chromians is just the fancy word for color noise. Play around with standard deviation and amount and maybe the robustness how big the filter will be above this image. Play around with this. You can also use a real-time preview in this one, which is great. A bit older, but it still works well and it can be a good choice for your image. Now we move on to TGV Denoise, which is the newer noise reduction tool in Pixinsight and it works quite good as well. We can swap between RGB and lab mode. As far as I know, lab mode is more used to what the human can see to our human vision. So if you want to work with color, switch to lab and switch to chromians if you have a, if you have a lot of color noise in there, like I do right here. Now we have strength, self-explanatory, edge protection, smoothness and iterations. TGV denoise does not work with wavelets, so it iterates the process and it's a good thing to check the automatic convergence, so if it doesn't detect a great improvement, it stops before it's over smoothing the image too much. Again, play with these values. You can have a really finely tuned value over here, a more broadly value over here, and this in the back are powers of 10. So this is now 7, 70, 700. Pretty easy. You can see the protection is now at minus 3, which means 1 over 1000. 0.003. And again, this time let's create a quick mask. TGV denoise is used on stretched images, so it's used on this one for example. I will create a quick mask on only the nebula. Remember white selects. Now I would only work on the nebula. I don't want that. So I will choose this one and invert. Now I'm only working on the background noise. Put it on there. I don't like this rendering mode. I go for replace and deactivate the showcasing of the mask. The mask is still applied. You can see you can see it by this tab. It's brown. There's a mask. And now lightness bump the strength up. You can go for 50 or even more. Chromians as well, 70 works great. You can really bump that up. I will choose as preview to make this go faster. And apply. Because if we work on the entire image, it can take quite some time with TGBD noise. Zooming in, you see the noise has been tackled pretty good. Undo and redo. You could reduce the color noise a bit more. And let's see about some details. Not altered at all. You see right here, this is where the mask catches and here where it does not. There's now this gradient from noisy to not noisy. I don't, I don't like this a lot. So play around with edge protection and smoothness. And this is also why masking, in my opinion, is not the best way to go about noise reduction. I like wavelets a lot more. So my favorite is MMT and ACDNR. This has been TGV Denoise and now to the last one, which in my opinion is not really, is not really used as noise reduction necessarily but it is still listed under the noise reduction tab. You can see SC and R. I will remove the mask. SC and R, I always used it to get rid of a green cast in the image. And I just thought it's bumping maybe the green channel down a little, a little. But what it actually does when I research this video, it removes green color noise. Or if you choose red color noise or blue color noise. In space there is nothing green, so a green cast in space images looks really unnatural. So that's why we use the basic settings here and remove green noise. It turns it a bit brown maybe, so in combination it looks, the entire thing looks more blue, maybe more purplish. And redo. 
looks good. So this is SCNR, just tackle one type of color noise in your image. And you can play with the amount if you think it's too much. If you are done playing around with your noise in the image, you can combine the star mask and the image again. And to just show this real quick, I will go to Pixel Math, go in the editor, select my image, select my star mask, and create a new image out of this one here. Have one of these open and hit the square. And here is the image. The finally noise reduced star image. I didn't actually use any of these aside as CNR, but you get the idea. You can of course also work on the star mask as well, but Starnet is so great there is no noise in these stars, this neural network has been tweaked really finely, that's just great. You can of course use the morphological transformations on this to shrink the stars, but this video is about noise reduction. So if you have any questions or comments about it, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you have some tips on what I could improve, I will pin those to the top. As for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict. I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.